Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Calon Church. Wherever you're joining us uh, today, we give you a warm welcome and thank you for being us. It's been an exciting week at Calon Church uh, already. We had people last week emailing us and getting in touch from as far as Ohio and Hong Kong. So thanks, wherever you are, for coming in and joining with us uh, this morning. Can we turn to God's Word together? I want to read a few verses by means of encouragement for you this morning from Romans chapter 9, and we're going to read from verse 35 that says this can anything ever separate us from Christ's love does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death no says God's word no despite all of these things overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries for tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. I love God's word and I love its truth. So just for the next hour or so, let's worship together and understand that there's a God that loves us and has a plan for our lives as we meet uh, together today. So Karis is going to lead us in worship. Join with us as we sing. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises he Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear worship, he hears faith. Now wake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud, and sing his praise aloud.
So come, Holy Spirit, let the dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Ah. Hey, know today that you are not forsaken. And whatever place you find yourself in today, the Lord is with you because nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Come on, let's pray for a minute. Father God, we thank you that you love us and we thank you that above all else you want us to know this morning that we, you are close and that you ne are near to us. So I pray that each person that's under, under the sound of my voice today, as they are hearing God's word and as they listen to all the songs and as they allow these words to just come into their minds and their hearts, Lord, that they might know that you are with them and that you are near regardless of their situation or circumstances. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're glad to have you with us today, and it's my privilege today to uh, also be here with Andrea, who's going to come, come and uh, bring to us God's Word today. So I hope you've got your Bibles with you. Uh, if not, I encourage everybody to get you version Bible on their phone and follow us in the Scriptures today. Turn to Andrea and God's Word. Hi, hello, how are you? I hope you're well. So, we're going to just kick right off with the word. Get your Bibles out. We're starting off with Psalm 46. We're going to focus in on just one verse of it, but I'm going to read it all if that's okay with you. So, let's crack on. Right, here we go. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. This is it. This is verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So that's what we're focusing on today. We're going to just focus down into verse 10, if that's okay with you. You know, this is a really uncertain time. This is a really topsy-turvy time for us. It's a time of displacement, uncertainty. It's a time of loss. And you know, when we're experiencing loss, we experience so many different emotions, anger, denial, bargaining. Some of us don't even want to know what's going on, so we pretend that it isn't, and we miss what God is doing in this time. My encouragement, my exhortment to you this morning is, is to have an attentive ear to hear what God is saying to us at this moment, at this time. He is speaking to us. He wants us to understand what it is to know him, to love him, and to serve and worship him in a time of trial. At this point, the sons of Korah wrote this psalm, and it was a time of huge turmoil in Israel, a time of huge disruption. And they were worried. They were concerned. They didn't know what to do. And the word of the Lord came to them and it was simple and it was clear. And at this time, we need clarity. So this morning, if it's okay with you, what we're going to do is just focus down onto verse 10 and really break down what it means for us to be still in this moment, for us to know what God is saying, for us to understand and grasp the depths to which we are loved and how God wants to play out our relationship with him within this hour, within this time. Friends, we are in royal position for such a time as this. And I pray fervently that as God speaks this morning, you will recognize who you are and you will take up the mantle that God has purposed for you in this world. So first of all, what I want us to focus on, when fear is lurking, how do we do it? How do we overcome? And God is very clear. He says, be still. Be still. Why? 
why the only rationale we are given for being still is to understand and know that he is God. In this context, we're not talking about a stillness that is passive, a stillness that is a dereliction of duty. We're talking about a stillness that is absolutely dynamic, active, purposeful and purposed. We are purposed by God in his entirety to be still in this moment. You know, lots of us will know and understand what it means like to be unstill at times, where the disruption comes. It's estimated that one in four of us in any given course of a year will experience a mental health issue. And right now, where there's so much uncertainty, we can be absolutely certain in a certain God. We can be absolutely still and know that God is for us, not against us, that he loves us with an unfailing love, and that we are purposed for good doing in his name that furthers his glory and nothing to do with us. So when God says, be still, he isn't asking you to do nothing. He's asking you to take a moment to step back to create a margin, a space in which he can move in our lives. He's asking us for permission to work in our lives. And all we are requested to do is to, within that moment, just be still. So, once we're being still, what else? You know, we stop the struggle, we stop the striving, we stop the, the panicking, we stop and that stopping, again, is a purpose stopping. We are action people. When we are being still, we're still doing. It's still a verb. And we very much take the mantle of that. We take that step back. And in that stillness, take a second. Take that moment God has given you. Take everything that God is wanting to give you within that moment of being still. And when that stillness comes when we stop the striving, when we stop the seeking, when we stop asking for answers that we want, when we are trying to agenda and table items for God in some heavenly meeting, which means that things that are important to me get bumped up, where actually what he needs become, becomes the priority and what I want just becomes any other business. We take that moment within there, take a moment, and then you know. My top tip for managing stress is always the same. Take a minute. Breathe and focus on what you know. And in this context, when we're talking about focusing on what you know, we are being still and knowing that he is God. And we know that he is God because of what he's done for us. God sent his only son to die for us that we might have eternal life. And he did it for all of us. The heart of God is that all of us would know Jesus and accept his salvation and come to know him as our Lord. That is the divine ultimate purpose and calling upon our lives. And as Christians, our job, simple, to tell other people about Jesus. It's really, you know, a privilege and an honor to be in that position. And once we grasp how much God loves us and wants to talk to us and wants us to listen, you know, he doesn't need us. He wants us. He wants you, friend. He wants you. He wants your undivided attention. He wants you in this moment to know that you can rely on him like you rely on no other. That even though you might be in isolation, you are not isolated at this time. You are known, seen, and loved by a living God. And as we move forward with that, I'm reminded of Jesus in Mark 4. The only one who can still the storm is Jesus. He calls to the storm to be still within that moment, within that moment of knowing, you know that you can be still, that there is a clarity and a certainty and an absolute unwavering belief that what you believe is true. The knowledge of God in our life is all surpassing when we are still enough to know and understand what he is saying to us. And the third point that we come into is that we will know that he is God that he is God, friends, that he is God. And I think, you know, at a time where things are difficult, we can feel like we've been forgotten. We can feel like somebody else's, you know, prayers are way more important than ours. That we maybe haven't got any business troubling God at this time. That what we want, what we need, what we need right now, maybe isn't what we need to be praying for. Your prayers still matter to God. 
Your prayers still matter to a living God. And if you think you have forgotten, you couldn't be more wrong. In Isaiah 49, God clearly says through the prophet, you know, mothers will forget children, but I could never forget you. How could I forget you when I have written your name on the palms of my hands? That is what God says about you. You are at the forefront of his mind at all times. You are seen and known. He would never forget you. He can't forget you. He made you. And he made you in his likeness. He made you in his image. So you can't ever be forgotten by God. And as we sit in that moment and we know, we know that he is God. We need to remember about Exodus 14, 14 as well, where he says, the Lord your God does battle for you. You have only to be still. So enough striving, enough battling, enough moving on, where every action and account needs to be tabled and monitored because we need an answer for it. We need a rationale for it. We need a moment for it. Instead, I'm asking us to just for this time, and once we get better, we'll do it forever, I guess, is that time where we know we need to rest right now. There are no easy answers right now, I don't think, if there ever was. We're trying to, if we try and look for answers, we're trying to simplify the complex and we just can't do it. You know, this is where we are. This is what we're doing. And when we know that God is God, we know God. And I'm thinking, when we know that God is God, I'm reminded, you know, about um, Newton's law of, motion, law of motion, the third law of motion, which you all obviously know because I can see you shimmering with intelligence right now down the, down the lens. I know that you know that that means that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, like a Newton's cradle, those balls that bang against each other all the time. What that means is right now, as your peachy bottoms are perched upon chairs, they don't crash to the floor all of a sudden because the force with which you are placing on that chair is met with an equal force that keeps you certain and still there. So as we move in action in our stillness, our action is met with action. Our force is met with force. Friends, we have a God who covers our back. When we act out, when we step out, God is with us. He doesn't leave us. He doesn't forsake us. He walks with us through all of that. And we can be certain that where we go, where we set our feet is holy ground because the Lord God himself is with us. And he's promised that. And he doesn't break his promises because he can't lie. And I stand certain in that, that the knowing of God and the knowing that he is God unleashes the full power of God in our lives. But in order to understand that, we set ourselves aside and fully grip on to this stillness that he commands us to do in his work. And once we do that, we bless other people, we empower other people, and we know that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. We know that every nation will bow before God. We know that he will be exalted in the world. So we don't have to strive for that. We just be still and do his work. And friends, as we're talking here, I just want to pray for you. I want to pray for this stillness. I want to pray that as you move forward and know God, that you will know his stillness. You will find that his stillness is all encompassing. You will find that his stillness replaces any emptiness and striving that you might be feeling. That it is a stillness that is active and actual and real and tangible. But it is powerful because it is God. I hope you have a good week. I hope and pray for you that all goes well. Amen.
Father, my prayer for everybody who is listening online right now and for everybody uh, who is just having a particularly tough week, I pray that they might know the love of God. I pray that they may know the stillness of your presence and that they might know that you are God, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your time with us uh, this morning. Can I just uh, take the time to remind all the children uh, that on three o'clock on Saturday, we send out all our Calon Kids content. So I hope you uh, are getting involved in that and uh, doing some uh, craft and having some fun there. Uh, and then can I remind everybody that's connected with Calon Church or anybody in the Ammonford, Llandailo, Carmarthenshire area that we are here to help and serve you. So please go to calon.church forward slash online and you will find all information and all support uh, from us available for you there please don't be backwards in coming forwards uh, please if you need help or you need somebody to fetch some groceries for you or you just need somebody to talk to please give us a call or connect with us we are here to be able to uh, help you and then for those of you that are connected with the church can I ask you to continue to be faithful in your giving thank you for giving your time today and thank you to so many people that help make Calon Church happen on a week-to-week -week basis but for that to happen we need your generosity to continue so can I ask you all to uh, just log on online and uh, follow the links on the bottom here and there's ways for you to uh, continue to give to the cause that's our church and as well as that if you want to donate uh, we would uh, welcome that um, so that's all from us this week whatever you've got going on for the rest of today I pray that you would know that he is God and there's a God that loves you today. Have a great day.